The world reached a total population of 7 billion in October 2011. This milestone is an opportunity and call for action for governments to renew the commitments made in 1994 during the International Conference on Population and Development ICPD, to put the reproductive health, rights, dignity and well-being of people at the center of development. The 25 PPD member countries are home to over 57% of the world population. Our world of 7 billion has the largest youth generation the world has ever known. Young people aged 10 to 24 years accounts for nearly a quarter of the world population. From developed to developing countries, Young people face inequitable access to reproductive health services, resources, and opportunities. Many adolescent girls and women cannot determine their age of marriage and fertility. Populations are exceeding economic growth and ability to access equitable and quality health services. South-South cooperation is a pathway for addressing complex and interrelated reproductive health, population and development challenges. PPD is one organization that is uniquely positioned and reflects the international acceptance of South-South cooperation as a vital means of universal access to sexual reproductive health and rights and sustainable development. The wealth of experiences in southern countries is distinctively suited to assist scale-up of reproductive health and population programs in other developing countries. South-South cooperation is a highly effective model in addressing cross-border and culturally similar context challenges in resource-poor countries. When PPD was launched in 1994 by 10 developing countries, and the 10 developing countries started a very big work. And I think it's been an immense experience for India because PPD is a very, very strong uh, alliance of uh, 25 member countries uh, and also the political commitment uh, that you have at the highest level from the member countries is truly extraordinary. Uh, the ministers uh, represent their countries in, in the board meeting uh, and also the selected countries represented through their ministers at the executive committee. And it's related to the MDGs because every MDG, among all the eight MDGs, anyone you name, is related to women because women's concerns are mostly reproductive health related and population related. And therefore, all the eight MDGs are related to population and development and they are related to gender equality, equity and the empowerment of women. That shows the relationship. That's why you have to achieve all the MDGs to achieve gender equality, equity and the empowerment of women. And you have to achieve, achieve all the MDGs to achieve population and development issues and concerns. So you look at the whole life cycle of a person, but we have more focus on some of them. So MDG 5 is one of our key priorities, but we have overarching strategies gender equality and women empowerment for PPD that is an overarching strategy. If you look at the uh, research that PPD has done uh, in all these countries we have the governments have come up with uh, very excellent uh, work programs uh, nationally and there has been extremely good lessons learned. So if we have to present uh, 
the strategies which have become successful in a developing country setup uh, that can influence the kind of strategy that the UN approves of the Global uh, Assembly. We, we have benefited a lot as member countries uh, from each other. I think we have benefited uh, a lot in terms of uh, sharing uh, technical expertise in the area, area of uh, population and development. Uh, this has mainly been through capacity building uh, amongst member countries, which uh, has benefited uh, our country in terms of uh, sending uh, senior government officials and senior uh, professionals to other member countries to be trained in various aspects. So I think in this way, we can learn from each other and to, to discuss with each other the future strategies we're going to take. I think this is very great help for all countries, including China, mm -hmm. in developing its national strategies and also programs for population programs. Uh, China had indicated that they had a new technology that they would like to donate to Kenya so that we could try and see whether it can work. And this is the Sinoplanums. Uh, these are the uh, the one of the contraceptives that uh, they are manufacturing in, uh, in, in China and uh, uh, so far the indications that we have is that uh, uh, that product is doing fairly well. So the reason why I'm putting all this is that uh, we have benefited from both the hardware and the software of the reproductive health commodities. And this is where PPD is a unique body because it's a unique body of 25 member states that allows them, it gives them a forum to, um, to exchange those experiences and to learn from each other. And I think that's the unique value of PPD. We learn from each other, we cooperate with each other, we have the best practices from each country that we try to implement not only in Bangladesh, from Bangladesh to other countries too. The experiences that we have, the learnings that we have, is extremely beneficial and does help us in many ways. Is to create awareness among the member countries and create evidence for action and to develop capacity among the partner countries. PPD should articulate its issues and should convince the global leadership and get their commitment that the global leadership must do something for this humanity. But I think for me what is really important is the facility, the opportunity that is created by PPD to give best in practice uh, opportunities and uh, opportunities to interact. Our unique selling point in PPD is this our South-South character and we need to exploit it more uh, and take greater advantage of that unique selling point and um, unique identity of uh, PPD. PPD's role as a technical support provider in terms of policy dialogue and also providing a platform for um, countries to come together and exchange their ideas and also to compare their policies and program and also on informal level high level ministers and uh, policy makers they exchange their lessons their experience in dealing with population.
issues and also their experience in ensuring uh, essential drugs, essential medicine and also minimum uh, healthcare demands and standards. The other emerging issue is that what are the minimum standards of care and support? What are the minimum standards of policy requirement? What are the minimum standards of program requirement? And to come out with some kind of an indicator for measuring this the success or failure and this is an increasingly a challenge on PPD. Creating globally acceptable, access, access, acceptable and accessible uh, indicators for measuring the success of the population policy globally, we have difficulty in, in creating those consensus. For example, if you look at the population policies across the region, we could see that there is a severe gender disparity. Population policies are even now uh, heavily focused towards reproductive status of women. Men's involvement in family planning is very rarely taken up by the government and also allocating resources for educating men and to, to play their role in ensuring the uh, family planning and the contribution is across the region and across the globe there is very limited success in that area. In some countries they have they are simply given up pro targeting men for um, promoting family planning and in some countries they have a very limited success. So I would say that this is one of the significant unfinished agenda of ICPD. How, how to ensure that there's a gender equity in family planning and population programs. To achieve universal access to reproductive health for all, population stabilization and sustainable development, we must have meaningful participation of all individuals strong partnerships between governments, development partners, the private sector, the civil society including NGOs and faith-based and cultural institutions. I wish to emphasize that the family planning is central to improving health outcomes. This is the time to renew commitments for South-South cooperation at all levels not as a replacement but as a necessary complement to North-South cooperation for realizing reproductive health and rights for all and sustainable development.